Oh, that's on consent. Oh, is this? Yeah. Okay, well, then never mind. <laughs> Let's call this meeting, the regular meeting of the Ketchikan Kansas City Council order. Please call the roll. Coos? Here. Gage? Here. Harris? Present. Isom? Piper? Severson? Here. Singy? Here. Please join me in the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. Um, the first thing um, under communications, first thing we do is we have a re uh, resolution um, tonight to choose respect. Um, I'd like to um, read it. Is there somebody here to? Res Susan. Susan, great. Um, whereas choose respect marches and rallies raise awareness of Alaska's epidemic on domestic violence and sexual assault. Whereas since 2009, these marches have helped give a voice to thousands of Alaskans who are affected by this blight of Alaska and Alaska families. Whereas interpersonal violence assaults are our collective humanity and deems, demeans the uh, devastates innocent victims, hurts families and friends, even diminishes the lives of the predators. And whereas not only women, but men living in Alaska experience domestic violence, emphasizing that the problem of domestic violence across all economic, racial, gender, educational, religious, and societal barriers, whereas together Alaskans can offer compassion to victims and survivors and foster a dialogue that allows fellow Alaskans to speak out. And whereas supporting and participating in the Choose Respect March promotes change towards breaking the cycle of violence against future generations now thereby be resolved that I, the Williams third mayor of the city of Ketchikan, Alaska, do hereby proclaim March 31st, 2016 as Choose Respect Day and urge all residents in the community of Ketchikan to be on be an agent of change and break the cycle of violence against future generations. Um, I'm on the board of the First City Homeless Services, and uh, we're hosting this event along with WISH. So um, the state had it against just domestic violence, and we included all the people that need to be um, recognized that they need some assistance and help. So we hope people will come, and it will be listed on our Facebook page of the First City Homeless Services. So if you need some more information, and I do have Now, Sue, I have you down on persons to be heard. Did you want to say something else? Yes. Great. Start us off. <laughs> I was hoping. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to forget this. So, anyways, good evening, city council members, mayor, and um, our community. My name is Susan Peters, 5067 North Tongas Highway, and I am the owner and operator of Scanlon Gallery and Art Expert Gallery downtown. Um, I want to speak on um, new business item two and three. I um, am a member of the committee that was formed last spring to address the issue again of hawking and barking in the downtown area. And I know everybody has heard me here and um, before and many others. A new ordinance has been established to address the ongoing problem during our visitor season. <clears throat> Excuse me. I recommend you support this for as a good first step to control inappropriate solicitations to people harmlessly walking the streets of our downtown. Along with this, enforcement is a must. So I hope 
and it is being addressed. Also, fines are being addressed, so that's a good thing. I think working together with the borough to prevent any new conditional use permits to be given to vendors or agents outside structures within the defined area in downtown. And so I know all of you know that, but for the public, um, a designation has been set, so, uh, and I think that's a good thing. I think it's important we protect this vital industry to our community and provide a comfortable environment for our community and our visitors so they want to come downtown. I think all the time the city council has done on this, the city attorney and the staff working on this issue. So I think it's a great first step and I hope you support it also. Any questions for Sue? Thank you, Sue. Okay, thank you. I have nobody else signed up. Would somebody else like to talk other than Terrence? <laughs> <laughs> Come on up. I'll be very brief. I just wanted to, um, I know you have these in your uh, emails, um, but I'd like to formally invite you to the Prime for Life events that we have next week. Um, Prime for Life training provides support solutions and hope for individuals and families struggling with substance abuse and addiction. Um, if a, if a, a, per, a kid gets a minor consuming or a DUI um, and they go to youth court, they might, they might take Prime for Life classes. Um, if a person fails a drug test at certain uh, businesses, they, they, rather than being fired, uh, some businesses will send them to Prime for Life uh, training. Um, and actually, Jan Lee is a Prime for Life trainer, so she can tell you a lot more than I can. But anyway, we're bringing up Michelle Ellison from, Prime for, from the Prevention Research Institute to catch a can this week, this next week, and she will have a meet and greet for law enforcement, um, legal professionals, social workers, and stuff at the Ted Ferry Civic Center on, at, from 5.30 to 7.30, and then uh, another one for um, medical professionals on Wednesday. But the thing that I'd love for all of you to come to is the we're going to have a Communities Talk uh, town hall meeting on youth substance use on Tuesday night at the Ted Ferry Civic Center from, we have a book from 6 to 9. I don't know if we'll need to go that long. Um, this will be everyone's opportunity to share your ideas and learn what we can do to prevent underage drinking and, that, and substance use abuse in Ketchikan. So um, it's not just going to be open mic night where people get to complain and point fingers. Um, there's going to be inf information provided. Um, there will be speakers. And then we'll break into uh, facilitated work groups and uh, that tackle different, different uh, um, substances like um, marijuana, meth, and heroin, and opioid use, um, and underage drinking. And then, um, and then we'll come back as a group and, um, and kind of see what we've come up with as next steps that the community can do to address these issues. So it should be really beneficial, and it's not just a speech you have to go listen to. So um, any questions at all? Any questions? Thanks, Terrence. Thank you, guys. Is there anybody else here who wants to address the council tonight? See you then. We'll move into our agenda. Thank you. That brings us down to consent agenda. I'd like to add, if everybody is accommodating, seven, five, six, seven, and eight, and nine. No, no, just sign through eight, excuse me. Um, and B4. Um, no, not five, six, seven, eight, and B four. All right. Do we have a motion to consent? The owner, I move to consent. Second. Move and second. And Madam Clerk, can you read the items? Um, hold on one moment. Um, why don't we add six A one two since we got to defeat that so we can talk about the other motions and then we don't have to make a separate motion for it. Well, the motion there. I think there is a motion on the table. Oh. Because uh, a motion was deferred to a well, we got to do it so, so But don't we have to just defeat it? Well, you, if you do con under consent agenda, you're approving everything. So yeah. Oh, gotcha. Okay, never mind. <laughs> gotcha. Cancel that. Go ahead and read the items. 
<laughs> yeah. Approval of minutes regular city council meeting of March 3rd, 2016. A budget transfer for the Civic Center exit sign replacement and a budget transfer for City Hall exit sign replacement. Volunteer recruitment and retention pilot program grant application. Revised memoranda of agreement between the United States Coast Guard and the Ketch Camp Fire Department regarding fire protection and emergency services. The Coast Guard Base Ketch Can and U.S. Coast Guard Cutter Anthony Petit. Affiliation agreement between the University of Alaska Fairbanks Community and Technical College and the Ketch Camp Fire Department in house paramedic training program. Budget transfers for the fire department moving expenses and fire boat repairs. The award of contract number 1604, utility tree pruning with Three Dog Construction Incorporated. A backflow prevention grant in aid, totem bar. Exempting the procurement of annual co-location services for the telecommunications division from the competitive bid written quotation requirements of the Kishkan Municipal Code, and that's with greenhouse data. Um, a budget transfer, the wastewater division treatment plant building B underground fuel tank, an offer of employment for the streets division supervisor, amendment number three to contract number 1442, design of Poland Wall Harbor reconstruction with P&D Engineers Incorporated, a reimbursement agreement for additional medical center construction work, Ketchikan Medical Center expansion, and a budget transfer, declaration of public emergency, telecommunications division, central office, Halong Fire Suppression re System replacement with Yukon Fire Protection. Anybody have any questions before we vote? Bob? Yeah, in regard, Your Honor, in regard to two and three, um, we're using tritium signs and they have a radioactive isotope in order to make them glow it. So, and they're about a 10 to 12 year product and then you have to dispose of them in whatever the appropriate manner is. And I'd like to see us look into, I know there's some photo illuminescent signs out there now, um, and if they meet the present codes for being used in the public building, I think they have a 25 year life maybe, and I don't think we have the disposal issue in regards to those. So looking forward, if we could get rid of something like that, I think it would be a, to our benefit. Thanks, Bob. Um, one other, if I may. Um, item four is our uh, volunteer recruitment retention pilot program. Uh, and Chief, I just wondering what pilot means. Does that mean like we're going to get funding for a couple of years and then we're not going to get any funding? <laughs> Essentially, yes. Uh, so the answer to that is this is a new program that they're just starting and, and piloting. And um, so they have funding for two years of the program. Uh, up to twenty thousand dollars that we can get reimbursed for our recruitment and retention efforts, and um, there's no ongoing commitment of funds from us. It just helps us out for that two years and, and see what we can do with it. We'll help them evaluate the materials that they're going to provide, and and they'll also provide some training along with that to assist us. Your Honor, yes. So, so if if it's true, if it turns out to be beneficial. If it turns out to be beneficial, then they may extend the program and, and open it up to other applicants for grants. Initially, they're looking, I believe it was 10 agencies will be selected to participate in the program. Okay, yeah, I'm just wondering if, how, this, how this was supposed to run, so. Right, so, so it's a temporary thing. We're, we're helping to evaluate what this program is by participating, and that way they can make a determination if it's successful and if they want to continue it on a further basis in other areas. Thank you. Anybody else? Call the roll. Coos? Yes. Gage? Yes. Harris? Yes. Sieverton? Yes. Singy? Yes. That passes by the nothing. That brings us down to unfinished business. Um, 6A1, um, the old ordinance. We could get a thing on there to vote it down. Okay. Unfinished. Okay. And this is already the motions on the floor. The is that is on oh, the floor. okay. All right. So, this is the old motion that we had originally that we delayed, and then we've come up with the new ordinances as we are in the under new business. So if we could vote this one away, then we can talk about the new ones. Okay. All right. Is this on the um, number one? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. So we'll be dealing this again with um, seven, eight, two, and three. Got it. Do we? Um, anybody have anything to say? Correct answer yeah. is no. Correct answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dick. Call the roll. Coos. No. Gage. No. Harris. No. Sieberton. No. And Ziggy. No. Thank you, everybody. Um, that's defeated, and that brings us down to boards and appointment. We have one appointment tonight, and that is Clayton Moore to the Parts and Harbor Advisory Board meeting. I mean, Parts and Harbor Board, do we have any objections? Hearing none, it's so done. That brings us down to 7A1, Resolution 1626-19, issuance of general obligation bond, $2 million for harbor facilities improvement as ratified by voters in June 26. So this has already been, we're not going out for a new bond. This is a bonding step we already did. Do we have a motion? Yeah. Go ahead. This is, um, let me make sure I got the right one here. This is the one to go out for municipal bond bank. Um, it's issuing the bonds for the harbor facility. Issuing. Oh, boy. <laughs> I, I want to make sure I have one here because it doesn't. Uh, Sixteen twenty-six nineteen. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. That's additional. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hit okay. the. Yeah. Hit that. There we go. Scroll. I got it. Make sure I have the right one in front of me. Your Honor. I move the City Council approve Resolution 16-2619 authorizing the issuance of general obligation bonds of the City in a principal amount not to exceed $2 million to finance the cost of certain improvements to the harbor facilities of the City as authorized in Ordinance Number 12-1697 and ratified by the City Voters at a special election held on June 26, 2012 authorizing tax levies to pay for the principal therefore thereof and interest thereon authorizing the sales of the bonds to the Alaska Municipal Bond Bank on the terms and conditions provided in the resolution and establish an effective date. Second. Moved and seconded. Anybody have anything on this? Dave, I have a quick question. Now the rates is going up in September or something of, of 2016. Correct. Is that the rate that's going to pay for us to selling these bonds? Uh, Mayor William, that is correct. Uh, okay, and that was what we anticipated in our budget. Right, it is in our budget. When the when we took the uh, proposition to the voters for consideration, the council developed a financing plan that would require rates to be increased seven percent for yeah, every I remember million that. dollars worth of debt issue. The uh, rate increase for 2016 is in the budget. And that the fourth uh, rate increase has been approved by the council. We may be looking at one more. Okay, how much is left in that bond? Uh, two million dollars. There's two million more. Yeah. And what are we get, what are we planning on that one on? We are going to do hole in the wall, which is already yeah. under construction, and the second project is the Bar Harbor North Ramp Three, and from And forward. that's what the last two millions for? Yeah. Okay. And then if we go ahead and do that, that's an, another rate increase for the following year. Yeah. Thank you very much, Bob. Okay. All right, call the roll. Sieberton? Yes. Singy? Yes. Harris? Yes, ma'am. Gage? Yeah. Coos? Yeah. Yeah, that passes five to nothing. Ordinance, oh, excuse me, the next one is 7AB, Ordinance 16, 18, 14, creating a new chapter 9.54 entitled Off Premises Commercial Solicitation Restrictions First Reading. Can we have a motion, please? Yeah, Your Honor. Go ahead. I move the city council approve the first reading ordinance number 16-18-14, creating a new chapter 9.54 entitled off premise commercial solicitation restrictions and establishing effective date. Second. Thanks, Dick. Um, I've been a part of the committee here and working on this since the last time we talked about this. This is a new ordinance, and we think that it. Um, We'll keep them in um, people inside the doorways, not hawking from um, the city sidewalks, or um, hopefully not using anything like um, speakers or anything else to try to hawk in um, along the sidewalk. There, the um, main issue last time we were some of the guys using the um, conditional use permits, some of the 
independent tour guys and along Front Street were concerned. And under that old ordinance, it would have um, pretty much abolished them. What we've done is, um, gra I'm sort of grandfathered the ones down there along Front Street, um, Nils and McDonald's. And um, what we're going to in the second thing, this resolution 162621, um, is a resolution that we're going to pass and move on to the Planning Commission. I'll be talking to them next Tuesday where we'd like to, um, and this is just in the downtown area, um, in encourage them to um, not have conditional use permits into doorways in the downtown area. And if they do, somebody does want to do some sales, they have to have an enclosed structure. So that would put them into, um, you know, um, Hazelquist parking lot, um, Redmond. It would keep them into an area where they're an enclosed instead of a doorway. Um, like we're trying to enforce with everybody else. So um, it's our, we put it together, it's our best shot. Everybody seems to be on board to go ahead and move uh, forward on this and see how it works. Um, as you can tell, we don't have a giant crowd here like the last time um, coming Ooh, at us, but we still have reading. a second reading. But um, this does not, um, I think this will um, get us in the right direction. We'll see what um, happens after the year, but um, I'm comfortable and um, with moving ahead. Any, any other comments? Yeah. I agree with everything you said. It took this committee a long time and a whole bunch of different conversations to get where it is now. And we have a second reading, which will fill this room. I'm pretty sure on that. Uh, I I'm hoping not. Well, we hope not. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Anybody else? Um, just based on what you guys did in the past year, the previous year before you guys actually started implementing this, it was horrible going downtown. I didn't even enjoy going downtown, so I'm really happy with what we have here. So we'll see how it works. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, call the roll. Harris? Aye. Gage? Yes. Coos? Yes. Zingy? Yes. Sievertson? Yes. That passes 5 nothing. brings us down to 7A3, resolution 162621, objecting to the issuance or renewal of certain conditional use permits. And this is, like I was saying, is the thing we'd like to um, approve and pass on to the Planning um, Commission. This does nothing but um, show that the council, this is our position. Uh, we, you know, they can vote against this all they want or whatever, but I think working together, I've been, we've been meeting, Dave and myself, and been meeting with um, the Planning Commission, um, or the Planning Department guys out there, and they're um, really familiar with what we're, our objective is and, um, and working with us. So. Uh, we can pass this along, and I'll go talk to them, and we'll see where we go. Any questions? Do oh, do we have a motion? I apologize. <laughs> yeah, your honor. Go ahead, Beck. I move the city council approve resolution number sixteen twenty six twenty one, objecting to the issuance of issuance or renewal of certain conditional use permits by the city to by the Catch Can Gateway Borough and establish an effective date. Second. Moved and second. Anybody else? Think? I, I've just got a question. Um, it talks about renewal of per, per, such permits we aren't going to object to, maybe, but it, then it says doesn't preclude. And I guess what I'm fishing for is are we comfortable that, say, that permit changes owners and we're not comfortable with it? What is, do we have an option to deal with it? Well, me and David talked about it. Go ahead. That, that, that's the whole the the whole idea behind that, Councilmember Coos, is that what we're saying here is, is that if things change, this doesn't lock council into not objecting to something in the future. Okay, whether it okay. be a, whether it be a change in ownership or what may have you, council would would have the prerogative to object to it. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Call the roll. Coos? Yes. Gage? Yes. Harris? Yes, ma'am. Sievertson? Yes. Zingy? Yes. That passes five nothing. That brings us down to 784 liquor license renewal for City Saloon Beverage Dispensary. Um, we had a lay on the table. Does that? Your yeah, Honor. Go ahead. Pursuant to the Ketchikan Municipal Code 5.20.050B, 
I move the City Council protest the renewal of the beverage dispensary for City Soon license. Direct the City Clerk to schedule a public hearing on the protest at 7 p.m. on April 7, 2016, in the Council Chambers and notify the license applicant uh, in accordance with the Ketchikan Municipal Code Section 2.20.050B. Do we have a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Bob? Um, yeah, we had three options here. Um, uh, you know, this is something that we've been have been before us before, uh, and I'm not sure. And I had a call in to the uh, ABC board to, to find out because what we're going to do is we're going to protest it. It's still up to the ABC board what they're going to do with it. All we do is file a protest. And I asked what weight either of these motions had, and since this is the one by ordinance that they recognize I felt it was the best effort to go through that in that manner. Dick? Yeah, have we had any, has the applicant made any contact to them? anybody saying they're going to pay it? I have not heard from them, but okay. I understand the property tax, or the borough revenue department has not heard from them either. Okay. And um, I mean, didn't we have this the last time? Last year was fit. their package liquor store license. But it's still a liquor license, yeah. Right, this year is their I got store. no problem. Yeah, I, um, I called the bro today and there still hasn't been any payment made or anything. So. Call the roll. Cuse? Yes. Gage? Yes. Harris? Yes, ma'am. Sievertson? Yes. Zingy? Yes. That passes five to nothing. That brings us now down to 7A9, budget transfer change order 7 to contract 1338A construction services for the Ketchikan Medical Center expansion project, Lake and Dawson Joint Venture construction Constructors. Do we have a motion? That's nine, right? Yeah, okay. How are we getting there? Your Honor. Go ahead. I move the City Council approve change order number seven to contract number 13 dash. 38A construction service to Ketchikan Medical Center expansion project between the City of Ketchikan and Leighton Dawson Joint Venture Construction in the amount of $284,409, authorizing a budget transfer in the amount of $8,143 from the Ketchikan Medical Center expansion transition phase and alternate master budget phase two capital account to the Ketchikan Medical Center expansion project capital account. Approved funding from the Ketchikan Medical Center Expansion Project Capital Account and direct the City Manager to execute the change order on behalf of the City Council. Second. Moved and seconded. May I add anything, Bob? Well, I think it's important to note that um, we're making a budget transfer um, out of the Phase two monies, which means that part of the contingency has been depleted. And so I don't know where we're at on the total project, but I don't think this is probably going to be the last one of these that we see. So I don't know how we manage the extra expenditures going forward, but I think that it's very important that we keep a, a close handle and, and be kept aware of what the, those changes may be. Dick? Yeah, Lou, I, sometimes just this whole thing of reimbursement in this spot and this spot gets kind of messy, it seems like. And I don't know whether anybody tonight could give us a brief overview of how it stands, but it would be, I think we need a piece of paper that says, here's what's happened to those two reserve funds. I'm going to call up two, because I think the contractor had one. We had one. We're being reimbursed for something, and we're reimbursing somebody for something, and it's kind of, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dave, do you have an answer? Well, if, we, if, if what you're uh, asking for, Customer Coos, is a uh, basically a spreadsheet to show where the different what has been taken out of what's remaining in the different contingency funds and both in phase one and phase two we can provide that exactly. because be, because in, in this particular case this you know in in this budget transfer it's different than a reimbursable agreement that it's it's, a, it's apples and oranges yes i know there's two different things going on. exactly if you could get that to us by the next meeting we can do that your honor bob um this is all still within the realm of the money that we got through grants and bonds and 
we just did some value engineering. We had this pot that we had sitting that would call phase two or three or four. That is correct. It's still within the budget of the hospital, and I think that's important to understand. And the fact is, by doing this, we don't have to go out and look at the 1% reserve, uh, the hospital sales tax, uh, and take money out of the, the reserve That's account correct. there. That's correct. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Call the roll. Gage? Uh, yes. Harris? Yes, ma'am. Coos? Yes. Sieberton? Yes. Zini? Yes. Is that everybody? I have nothing to pass. That brings us down to 7A11 budget transfer, Spruce Mill Way repair project, decorative inlay crosswalks. Do we do 10? No, we got to do 10. 10. Got to do 10. Oh, I'm sorry. Did we do two? Yeah, just skip them. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> All right. That means we're, we're at 10. <laughs> Amendment to agreement for city funded medical center furniture fixtures and equipment acquisition phase one Kitchkin Medical Center project. Do we have a motion? Yeah, Honor. Go ahead. I move the city council approve the amendment to contract number 1531 between the city of Ketchikan and Peace House for the acquisition of city funded medical center furniture, fixtures, and equipment and authorize the city manager to execute the amendment on behalf of the city council. Second. Who didn't second it? Bob, do you want to add anything? Well, what this is is just finishing up. Uh, the city purchases stuff outright, and Peace House is obligated to reimburse us for it. So uh, that's kind of where we're going with this project. Anybody else? Call the roll. Zingy? Yes. Sievertson? Yes. Harris? Yes, ma'am. Gage? Yes. Coos? Yes. All okay, right, that passes 5 nothing. brings us down to 11, the budget transfer for the Spruce Mill Way Repair Project Decorative Inlay Crosswalks. Do we have a motion? Oh, I'll make the motion so Please. we can discuss it. Yeah. Yeah. I thought we should talk about it. I move the city council authorize the budget transfer of 10,000 from appropriated reserves of the public works sales tax fund to the street division 216 Baden Spruce Mill Way pavement repair capital account to facilitate the installation of decorative inlay crosswalk and detailed in the senior project engineer's memorandum dated March 9, 2016. Moved and seconded. Bob? Well, I think we should have public works come up and explain what we're doing here. Kara Jerzak, Senior Project Engineer. Um, so what it is is we're going to pave new uh, asphalt down there. And then after the paving, this contractor would come up and they have a template that's a stamp. They heat a special um, oscillating radiating heater, would reheat the asphalt. They press the stamp down in. And then, uh, and then they um, compact that down in the asphalt. And then they come through with a um, thermoplastic that matches the same template as the stamp. It lays in the grooves and they heat that in. So that is the same material as our current crosswalk striping. It's just inlaid into the asphalt as opposed to sitting on top. And what was the impetus, I mean, got us going in this direction other than Carl's excited about it? And I mean that in the nicest way. <laughs> I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Oh, well, I talked to Carl about it. Well, I mean, what's that? Um, emphasis for doing getting to this are we looking at doing this throughout the city as we go or I mean out the downtown or that's an option that we have moving forward um, I think so the current intersection that we're looking at is um, very popular during the summer right lots of tourists are there all the cruise buses coming off both berths come through there um, and we're redoing the roadway and it just seemed like a good opportunity if we wanted to take the chance and do something decorative for downtown. If we wanted to and if we like it after this trial run, we can move forward and put it elsewhere in downtown. Generally? Would it, would it also be somewhat um, easier to see that people, as crosswalks? Could it be like even um, reflected? You cannot, legally, we cannot have the decoration in the middle of the crosswalk be retro reflective. Uh, the 12 inch white stripes that would surround the outside, those have to be retro reflective. It is um, visually distinguishable, you know, more so than a regular crosswalk, I'd say. Any other questions for Chair? Yeah. Um, 
the 12 inch stuff on a wet day is real slippery. Yeah. <laughs> After it wears a little bit. What's this rope type stuff? Is it going to add to uh, the potential for slip strips and falls? You know, I mean, I haven't seen any of it in wet applications. Um, it's recessed a quarter inch. Actually, I think it's an eighth inch below the finished surface of the asphalt. So your foot, your shoe should never actually touch the product itself. Um, so then you're just walking on asphalt that has additional grooves in it. Um, it's ADA compliant. And then that location also, you know, it's also, you know, bumpy down there. Um, are we just going to get those bumps again as time goes? And how is this going to fare? Um, well, eventually the road is going to continue to settle and move. Um, the organic composite that's below the road is going to decay. Um, we are putting in an improved road base with the geofabric. Um, so we won't, I really don't think that we're going to see the sharpness of the bumps that we have currently in the future. It's going to settle. There's no doubt about that. Um, it'll be a more gradual settling. Um, I would like to think that the road is going to outlast the decorative crosswalks. Okay. All right. Generally, Dick, Bob. I'm just wondering if with the decor being decorative, if it has any um, potential for being more visual to the drivers for seeing pedestrians if there's any proof of it being actual a benefit in that aspect yeah they call it um a traffic scape and that's the decoration that's within the corridor of the drivers and um, some people refer to it as traffic calming so it is more visual the the walk itself you know i can't say that they're going to see the people <laughs> within the walk but in theory they'll it'll they'll be more alert to the crosswalk Dick? Yeah, two questions, Tara. Uh, one, you've got an X in there going from corner to corner. I don't notice too many people really cutting that away, and do we want to encourage them to cut the corners, cut between corners? So I guess I'm questioning why put an X in the middle of the intersection. Oh, I'm sorry. So the photo that's titled uh, Duratherm Rope Design Installed? Yes. Okay, that's just an example of how it was installed in another town. We would not put the, the X in the middle okay. through the street. Um, just above that, it shows the layout that I proposed, which is a more normal corner-to-corner -corner crosswalk layout. Okay, then the other question is, I gather from the cover memo that if we were to decide to do this in the future, there's $300,000 we may or may not get from DOT to continue the project. We're going to get that grant from DOT. It's meant for um, pedestrian pedestrian improvements. Um, so we would have to apply. The DOT has to approve, you know, whatever designs I send to them. And so whether or not they would approve the use of these crosswalks, I can't say for sure. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Bob? Yeah. Um, I think it looks neat, but I'd rather put $10,000 into more sidewalk and more asphalt. So I, I'm not going to support it myself. I think that we, if we're going to spend ten thousand dollars, it should be on infrastructure. I think Bob hit it on that. I really like it and everything, but I just don't think it's the time. Mm -hmm. But it's a great idea. <laughs> All right, anybody else? Thank you, Dara. And uh, Tara, I know you called me. I'll be. I've been busy, so I'll get a hold of you the first of next week. We'll go look at that hole. Okay. Thank great. you. Luke. Yes. Uh, another question. I noticed. I want to see that intersection today that the work has started on something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. What intersection? <laughs> She's like, what? Tara. The intersection is tore up. <laughs> if you could ex explain Spruce Mill Way and where we are on that, please. Okay. Um, we are in phase two of a six phase reconstruction of that intersection. Um, and so right now we are putting in. ADA compliant ramps, pedestrian ramps. Um, previously, we dug the holes that you saw on the asphalt, and that was to um, extract the structures that were under the, the asphalt, poking up, if you will. So we removed those, now we're putting in ADA ramps, and then we'll excavate, put in an improved road base with a geogrid, and then final uh, pavement, and then crosswalk striping. 
Weren't those ramps off that, those four corners are already ADA? They attempted to be ADA. The law itself is um, quite complex, and what we're putting in now is truly that's, that's okay. ADA I don't compliant. Want to hear about the <laughs> Sorry. Thanks, Karen. We get too detailed. All right, call the roll, please. Singy? No. Severson? No. Harris? No. Gage? No. Coos? Yes. Okay, that fails four to one. And that brings us to item Catch Candy Public Utilities item B1 award of contract 1603 transmission and distribution line maintenance Chatham Electric. Do we have a motion? Your Honor, what, number, uh, how about um, number 12? Oh, oh so man, I am just off on it. <laughs> yeah. I wrote that fail. We didn't mind one. Okay. You wrote a fail on it? Well, I did it in another. We're on the 12th. Yeah, we're on the 12th. So we're on um, um, 12 Front Street, Mill Street, Stemma Street, Water and Waste Water Utility Replacement. Um, do we have a motion? Your Honor. Go ahead. I move the City Council direct staff to take such measures as may be required to move forward with the replacement of the wastewater and water utilities within the project limits of the Department of Transportation Public Facilities pending reconstruction of Thomas Avenue from Grant Street to Dearmont Street as detailed in the City Manager Report dated March 10th, 2016. Moved and seconded. Bob? Yeah, um, I don't know how we're going to pay for it. Uh, I know that we have some grant funds that we were planning to use in residential neighborhood. I guess we could redirect those. Is that correct, Bob? It's about $5 million. We can't? You don't think so? Because they were applied for for those particular projects? The project. Excuse me. Go ahead. Uh, the projects are completed if the grants were intending for it. My understanding is they're now subject to reappropriation by the state legislature. And there's not much we can do about it. Thank you, Bob. Um, I'm concerned about our, our bonding and, and continuing to bond. I understand that this infrastructure is important if we're going to pave over it and we want to make sure that we're not in there digging up holes and brand new asphalt. But again, uh, the cost estimate was what, $12 million? That we were thinking one point two. Uh, the, the, the two projects we have going on on this there's, one there's right two now, parts to it, right? Two two parts. One one is one point two million, and one is one point four million. We staff went through to identify the areas that were of critical need to be, to be replaced, both for water, uh, for, for water and for and for sewer force main. So what the, what this particular project would be, if you look through it, it identifies two two specific areas. Uh, let's see, I'm going to come down to the map. Okay. This doesn't fix everything. No, this does not fix everything. This is patching this, what this, we know this, is bad. This is patching. It's replacing what we know is bad. And so, the, like I said, the total for the two projects, the uh, to replace the water is estimated at 1.4, and for the uh, uh, the sewer is 1.2. So it's not full blown replacement tunnel attached sewers. Hmm. Well, my only problem is that um, now. You know, here we're talking about having to raise water and wastewater to the 2.9 or 2.8. Um, now we're not, we don't have anything else scheduled for water or wastewater rate increases for next budget cycle. We do not at this point. Okay. Um, I just hate to raise those again. Um, is there a way we can take, um, I mean, what if we, Bob, what if we took a, uh, a million out of our um, one of our other funds at economic development or whatever whatever to help offset that what kind of reduction could we do if you're thinking of doing that in lieu of a rate increase I'm not quite sure how that would be totally accomplished because keep in mind you would still have to pay the money back the money that we're proposing to borrow through this bond issue is through the ADEC low interest. Well, uh, what if we didn't use as interest. much of the bond and use some of the um, community facilities development, which you almost have, we have three million almost. 
Right, I would assume the intent of the council would be to repay those funds, is that correct? Uh, uh, I don't know, they've been sitting there for long enough. I don't know if we want to or not. It depends yeah, on what kind of money we have. Okay, uh, now, how much does KPU still owe us? Um, well, the original plan was a five-year payback, but the council changed it to a 12-year yep, payback. Yep, I understand that. And uh, I think you, we've made the first $426,000 payment, so we have 11 more to go. So what's that total? I think we, I think it's about 3.7 of the $4 million we still owed. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, that drops into either um, our um, economic development fund or drops into our community facilities development fund or drops into our, um, I know there's one more fund, major capital I, improvements, which is down to 4,000. But, um, I mean, we have some money there to play with to help off. You know, I'm looking to offset rate increases instead of, you know, I, um, but I want to get these projects done. So I'd like to, I mean, you know, at 2.8 and those things, um, you know, we use that money and out of those funds to, to, for the KPU project. And mm -hmm. I know they're there for reserves and whatever, but um, this might be a good time to help offset set this so we're not raising, um, I'd hate to, I just don't want to hit that water rate again. Well, one comment I would like to make is when the council established the community facility development fund that was intended to be used for the library, uh, the fire station, and the museum. We've already completed the fire station and the library project, we still have a museum project underway. And I'm not really sure if we really know what the total cost of that rehabilitation is going to be. I know, but there's still, those are about the only three funds the council can, uh, you know, council made them. And, you know, we can do what we want with them. And I'm not arguing with you or anything else. I'm just looking sure, for other yeah, ways absolutely. to, uh, to the council. talk to, you know, and maybe we can use one point. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get back there. Hold on. You know, we're looking at. Um, are we looking for 1.2 for the um, for the water project? There's 1.2 and 1.4. Which one's which? Uh, one second here. Will they combine? 1.4 and 1.2. Yeah. 2.6 million. Yeah. Which? How much is of that goes to the water side of it? 1.2. No. 1.2 1. 1. 1. 1. goes to the uh, wastewater, Your Honor. And 1.4 1. 1. 4 to the water. Because mm -hmm. okay. I wouldn't have a problem using um, some of that money for the 1.4 so we don't have to raise um, that water rate again. And then um, use the 1.2 of the bonds for um, and utilize the wastewater increase. But I'm just throwing that out there for council members to think about. That yeah. money's sitting there. Dick? Yeah, I guess uh, two questions or a question and comment. Are we okay if we take and use out of that development fund that the mayor's talking about and throw it into water, which is in the KPU site? Is that crossing any boundaries? Are you talking in terms of the charter or the code, whether or not the fund can be used yeah. for that purpose? I don't believe there's any restriction that would allow, that would prevent us from using general government money and putting those into KPU, to the best of my knowledge. Uh, there is a problem if they go any other way from KPU into general government. So. Okay, because otherwise I was going to say do the sewer with part of it. I don't disagree and leave the water alone, but uh, yeah, something's got to give. Dick, Bob? Yeah, Bob, do you have the number, uh, what is the... Um, the debt service to be paid on that. And what does the 2.9% and the 2.8% raises represent? I'm afraid you're going to ask me that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you can get back to us. Um, I'm going to say roughly, I think the number was around 125000 A year. We'd have. Oh, can't be that much. Maybe 80, maybe 80, 90000 for the combined? No, each one. So the total would be roughly you know, 180 to 220,000. Four, yeah, bucks, a year? Bit, but Four but bucks a customer. How much is that going to be? What's our bond payment going to be on that? I think each one would be roughly between 80 and 90,000 oh, dollars okay. a piece. Roughly. I, again, I, I don't have the numbers on the top of my head. Oh, you found it. Thank you. I wasn't too far off. Um, 
On the $1.2 million bond issue, it would be 87400 and on the $1.4 million, it would be 81600 and they have to assume the interest rate of 1.5 percent, which is what the low interest loan program is currently offering. And we're saying that we'd have to raise the rates. Now, are those, um, we could utilize, um, what do you call it, um, you know, we're going to pay off a bond here pretty quick, and how much do we pay a year on that bond? Which one? The one that goes in 2017. You're talking about the KPU um, bond that we're currently proposing to refund? Yeah, uh, but it's still going to pay off at the same time, correct? Right, pretty okay. much. We'll save about 21000 Okay. But that will be paid off at the end of 2000, June of 2017. And how much do we save then on that? What's our payment each year? Uh, one point. Three million. One point three. I mean, I don't, I don't mind going ahead and using this, um, these bond funds, but I don't know. Uh, maybe not earmark it as rate increases, and we can, um, you know, absorb it in the budget. Is that, or do we have to direct it out of wastewater and water because those are where they're utilized? The council certainly can decide how it want wants to do this, but. Um, Wastewater and KPU are both um, enterprise funds, and the intent behind the enterprise funds is to make sure that the, that well, the users pay for the operations and, and the capital spending. If the rates aren't high enough, um, what you're really doing is you're not fully funding the resources necessary to do the operation and to make your investment in capital infrastructure. I know, I'm just trying to think of new ways to do things because of um, I just hate to hit um, yeah. you know we've hit the water you know for three years in a row and um, I've been telling everybody this is the last one and now we're doing this and saying mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna I need to raise it again so I'd mm -hmm. rather um, come up with another way of um, funding it like I said um, we have money in reserve and we have money coming from that when that other um, Bond pays off, so and I know there's plenty of things we could use that 1.3 million for in, in the future. But um. one, one thing I would add is, um, and I don't know what how much is still owing, but the Community Facility Development Fund did loan some money for KPU. That's part of the four million dollar interfund yeah. loan, and are currently repaying that loan. So I'm not exactly sure how much is left in in the reserve to that fund. I'd have to go back and look at that. Which fund? The city fund. The Community Facility Development right. Fund. What happened is when we loaned KPU the $4 million that came from the Port Enterprise Fund, the Self Insurance Fund, and the Community Facility Development Fund. And we delayed repaying those funds until last year when we made the first payment. The original plan was to repay that loan in a five year period. The council extended it to 12 years. So it's going to take a little bit more time to pay off the, the loan that we've already made from the Community Facility Development Fund. And I believe the amount that we loaned was about 700000 So, Well, right now we have 2.8 in there, the Community Facilities Development Fund. Right, okay. okay. All right, well, those are my ideas for different, I mean, I'd like to do the projects, but I would like to pay for them a different way other than um, just raising the rates. Anybody else, Dick? Uh, yeah, I think we'd be remiss not to do the project. I, I think we could be more creative about how we pay for it. Whether we even have to dig into it at this point. And, well, we, I guess we would have to because I don't say budget time comes up. We can figure out whether we need rate increases or not. So I guess you're going to have to have a bond committed to deal with it. So we do need to do it. But I, I think we've got this project from $13 million down to 2.6 which hopefully gets us through in the long run. And I think that uh, it's a smart way to do business, so we just got to do it. And which way we fund it, uh, I can go in which way. Judy and then Bob. Can we commit to doing the project and then come back, get some additional information, and try different ways on how we can fund it? I, I would say so, but yeah. I think we could. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, maybe we can look at that and see. 
Uh, yeah, that's kind of what I was going to follow up. We we passed a motion here that said direct staff to take such measures as may be required, and we're now talking about the funding to, to meet those requirements. Um, so I think that if we can start looking at maybe a creative way to do that, and as Lou says, not necessarily put all the burden on rates, um, I think that would be certainly beneficial. We have to remember, too, that when we're talking about rates, we're considering going to a metered rate system. And I don't know where that's going to put us in the water division's uh, uh, revenues. So that, that may change something there, and, and I think we need to try to calculate that in also. Dick? Uh, yeah, it, it sounds like we're, we're ready to go say, let's do the job, we'll figure the cost out, or the money, but my other one is I assume, and this may be an engineering, that we're going to do this for the contract? Okay. More contractors? Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. then my other question, in order to get this done so that it's ready for DOT to do their thing the following year, we're going to be operating on it this summer. And I'm worried about traffic flow. Yes, um, so we're figuring that we would have to uh, fast track the design so you could expect that we would be coming back with a contract from a design engineer for the force main, for the slip lining of the force main. Um, we're expecting that we're going to do the water main in-house, so that design will be done by the um, engineering division in order to uh, control the schedule a little bit better. And then we'll put um, each of those two items out for bid uh, by contractors. I would anticipate um, possibly the water main could be done late this year, uh, September, uh, October, but more likely March. So we're thinking that the water main construction, which is traditional open trench construction, would be about five weeks of work. It's only 800 feet. It's eight inch main you know, high density polyethylene pipe. So it's not a big complicated installation. Not a lot of services, only three hydrants. So that's not a lot of work. The force main slip lining, that's uh, less invasive, although it, it covers more area. So we're about 1,200 feet. We have maybe six or eight test pits like test pit looking things so it's not all open trench um, but that project does take longer um, it's also um, you know both will take a little while to get permitted so it's very possible they wouldn't be able to start or they would be in construction this time next year and and still beat the state okay so when was the state going to start uh, 2017 April May, so hopefully they they get geared up in April. Uh, don't start in earnest till May. Um, but we'll be doing ours right before that. We'll be doing ours right before. Okay. Yep. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, Mark, we're also going to be held responsible for all the iron in the road. Is that correct? Um, yeah. So uh, most likely we will be replacing. Um, Manual frames and covers and uh, valve, water valve boxes. Yes. You, through the mirror, do, you, do you know if the if we're going to change? Do we have to change the water valve boxes all the way to the main, or are we just doing risers on top? Uh, I think we're going all the way to the main, but um, yeah. Are we going to be yes, using something than what we're using today? What's that? Are we going to be using something different than what we're using today? Um, different than what's in the ground today in that location. Yeah, I, I know we've been talking about water valves, and Dave, you may come up and, and talk to us a little bit about it. Uh, I've watched these projects, and when they tell you and we buy them with a screw, we have to specially order them, and then they cut the screw off. To make them work, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, David Johnson, KP Water Department. There's only going to be one service that's small in that area, it's a two inch. Since it is a two inch valve, we will not be using a service box, we'll be using a main valve box. Service boxes bottom out on anything that's larger than one inch. So 
it'll be the slip type of box, the bigger boxes, and that's all they're going to be using through that section because that's all that's there. Like uh, was said before, there's not very many services, uh, mainly sprinkler lines because all those are businesses. And then usually inside the, the businesses where they come off of their uh, potable water for the building. So there are just no small services in that section. Okay, I was just concerned because I know that we've had discussions about the boxes and part yes. of our paving projects, the cost of putting service boxes in. Right. What, tremendous. what we have found that for more information for you is they do make taller bottom sections. And the reason why we don't like to screw them together is because now it's a solid piece of metal going all the way down to our valve box. And if you have heavy loads of traffic and a lot of our roads around here settle over time, well, that will be a, a stiff piece of metal that's pushing down and could break the service off at the main. So that's why we cut the threads off. So if it does start to come down, we're hoping it slides. That's why we uh, also in our spec have them grease where the two pieces of metal slide together to try to give some give when it slides. So that's the whole reason why we try to cut the threads off. But we just here within probably the last year or two found out they made lar longer ones. So we have more uh, depth of trying to cut them and make them work. Are these the standard in the industry or are we having these specially made? We are having this style specially made as far as the lid goes. They do make this form of box that screw together all over the place. It's just we like the older style of lids which they switched to a different style of lid. The okay. newer style of lids are really thin and they break very easily. So we are still like the thicker ones that last longer in heavy traffic. Well, I, I think that we need to continue to look at that because I know that the labor, it's <coughs> labor intensive to put those valve boxes in and there must be a better mousetrap out there. And I, I agree with that with the shorter boxes because then they have to stack them and figure out how to get them stacked properly because then the measurements don't quite add up right. But since we did find out that they made longer bottom sections, that pretty much goes away now that, that I can see because now you could cut it to five foot instead of doing four foot or lower. You could actually order a longer box. Yeah, but we're still having to specially order these because they don't... Top sections. Just the top. Top sections. Like I said, the bottom sections are all pretty much a standard thing. They make a whole bunch of places. It's just that top section with that lid is the only really thing that we order out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else before we call the roll? Call the roll. Cruz? So, yes. Gage? Yes. Harris? Yes, ma'am. Sievertson? Yes. Zingy? Yes. Okay, hey, that passes five to nothing. That brings us down to KPUB1, Award of Contract Transmission and Distribution Line Maintenance, Chatham Electric. We have a motion. No, Your Honor. Go ahead. Uh, I move the City Council accept the bid of Chatham Electric in the amount of $56,085.76 per week plus $5,000 for mobilization, demobilization for contract number 16-3, transmission and distribution line maintenance, approved funding in the amount of $350,000 and $40,000 respectively from the electrical division's 2016 transmission and distribution maintenance capital account and from the Telecommunications Division's 2016 Infrastructure Maintenance Services Account, account number 635-08, and direct the manager to execute the contract on behalf of the City Council. Second. Moved and second. Dick, do you have anything to say? That's too long. Anybody else? Call the roll. Zingy? Yes. Sievertson? Yes. Harris? Yes, ma'am. Gage? Yes. Coos? Yes. Yeah, that passes five to nothing. This brings us down to item B2, resolution 162620, proposed refinancing of general, general obligation and refunding bond um, 2005 series one, which provides funds to purchase the city municipal utility. Purchase the city's municipal utility. Do we have a motion? I move the motion. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So 
Your Honor, I move the City Council approve resolution number 162620 approving the City's participation in a proposed financing of the Alaska Municipal Bond Bank and the General Obligation and Refunded Bonds 2005 Series 1, which provides funds to purchase the City Municipal Electric Revenue Refunded Bond 2005 under a loan agreement as amended between the City and the Bond Bank, authorizing the City Manager and Finance Director to approve the Revising schedule of principal and interest payments of the city's 2005 bond as amended in accordance with the loan agreement if the bond bank successfully refinances the bonds and establish an effective date. Second. Moved and second. Bob, can, you ask, can I ask you a question? Sure. So now this is the refinancing. Now, are we refinancing a 2005 bond? Is that the one I'm talking about on, that expires? Yes, it is. That was originally issued in 1997. We refunded in 2005. We're refunding again. Yep. The and then one. it still expires in June of 2017. Uh, the 2005 expires in December 2017, but the refunded will expire in June of 2017. It will be six months earlier. Okay, so when we refund it, it will be six right, months earlier. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Call the roll, please. Harris? Aye. Gage? Yes. Coos? Yes. Zee? Yes. Siebertson? Yes. All right, we just saved 21,000. <laughs> All right, that brings us down to B3, Ordinance 16-18-16, approving the Verizon of Wireless Agent Agreement and Amendment Number 4 to LTE and Rural American Master Agreement. First reading. We have a motion. Your Honor, I move the City Council approve the first reading in Ordinance Number 16 and 18 16, Improvement of Verizon Wireless Agent Agreement, and Amendment Number 4 to LTE and Rural America Master uh, Agreement, providing for the filing of a referendum petition and establishing an effective date. Second. Moved and seconded. You want to add anything, Bob? No, there was a lay on the table that uh, was to inform us that there was a change to page 19 of the Verizon Agent Agreement. Uh, Part of this ordinance. Anybody else? Well, Your Honor, there was an executive meeting potential on that. We, I mean, executive session, do we want to do it? If you guys want to do it, otherwise, no. we'll vote. No. I'm happy. Vote. Call the roll. Sieberton? Yes. Zingy? Yes. Coos? Yes. Gage? Yes. Harris? Yes, ma'am. <coughs> Passes 5 to nothing. That brings us down to. Number four, budget transfer declaration of public emergency. We did that. During we did that. Oh. <laughs> so, are we done with that? Oh, we're done of vouchers. Wow. That brings us. As long as you're having fun, huh? Boy, I must be getting old. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, vouchers for the daily news at $2,573. Do we have a motion? Your Honor. Go ahead. I move for approval of vouchers to catch again daily news in the amount of $2,573. Second. Seconded. Um, call the roll, please. Coos? Yes. Gage? Yes. Harris? Yes, ma'am. Sievertson? Yes. Zingy? Yes. That passes 5 0. It brings us down to manager's report. Dave, do you have things to I add? do not, Your Honor. Um, anybody have any questions on the manager's report other than that our museum director is leaving and we're sad? Um, here we are again. <laughs> well, I congratulate her husband on the uh, promotion, but we hate to see her go. Yeah, we yeah, always want to take their wives. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Mm -hmm. Can we hold her hostage? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, hearing none on the report, that brings us down to city clerk's file. Nothing, Your Honor. City Attorney's file. Nothing, Your Honor. Uh, Mitch, thanks for all your work on that ordinance on the um, hawking and stuff. Um, that brings us down to future agenda items. Does anybody have anything? Mayor and Council comments. Uh, Dick? Yeah, hey, uh, just a couple of quick ones. I was in uh, Juneau at Southeast Conference for two days this week. And uh, it was a pretty good conference. They talked about... Uh, power and transportation and fisheries and uh, we got into a timber discussion about the fact that the Forest Service told the timber industry there's only, they're not going to have any more timber. Basically, Viking Mill will be shut down in a year and a half unless something happens. And uh, so 
So I think there's going to be a move afoot to try to do a couple of things to influence the federal delegation to um, see if they can cause them to, to do something and also to stop the, tran the transition plan, which we provided, I think, a resolution or letter on here you know, in the past because it's part of the culprit. Uh, so I think we can stay tuned to see what goes on there. We'll be maybe writing another letter to see if we can get some help. The other one that I think affects us as much as anything is uh, we know the Marine Highway Department is uh, getting clobbered with cuts. And uh, so there's an effort of, afoot to look at the organization and I'll say who manages it. And there's some things, some thoughts that uh, parts of it may be able to be uh, privatized. I think the far end of the Lucian chain has two separate uh, vessels that work out there that might work there, uh, for a private entity. Whether any of that would work in South or East, they don't know. But there's, uh, they want to do a study, and there may need to, may need to be some money requested from the governor. And if there is, they're going to probably send something to the mayor, and then we can respond by putting our two cents worth in to try to get it operating more efficiently and on a on a long term normalized basis rather than up and down. It was, it, it was a it was a good conference. Thanks, Dick. Judy. No comments here. Gentilly. Nothing. Bob. Yeah, I was down at uh, the mall the other day, and they had a job fair going on. Um, there was uh, quite a few participants, a lot of people in there filling out applications. Um, the university and other training facilities were there. We had an opportunity as with the public works director, and we walked through and um, welding, truck driving, equipment operation. There was a, a host of different things being offered that uh, we have the ability to take advantage of if uh, if we so choose to do so, but it was uh, uh, optimistic and it was nice to see everybody out there. Thanks, Bob. KJ? No, sir, nothing. Um, let's see, I don't think I have anything other than, let's, go ahead. Let me, let me have, make one more comment. Uh, all the presentations at Southeast Conference probably within the week will be on their website. No, good idea. And I would encourage people to go look at the one that uh, Senator McGuire had that dealt with, uh, well, uh, how to take care of the state budget a little bit. And uh, to me, they keep throwing these terms around the constitutional budget reserve and the earnings reserve, and it all becomes Greek as to how it was set up and what it's for. And, and she made it pretty clear what it was, and she also showed a bunch of charts on how it, how it could figure out if they did uh, they take use use some of the of those two budgets, but I'm going to take a minute if you don't mind. The constitutional budget reserve, and they call it the CBR. It takes three quarters of a vote to get into it, and it was passed by us, us as voters. The earnings reserve account, which is where our dividend comes from, was created by the legislature and they can deal with it on a just a majority vote. So I, th so I think that gets very confusing. I know it always did to me because they call it CBR and EAR, or, and it goes on and on and on. But uh, she helped make that clear, I think, to a lot of folks that were sitting there. And so I would encourage you to uh, take a look at it if you get a chance. It'll probably be about a week before they get them all up. Thanks, Nick. All right, I have nothing. So that brings us down to Executive Session A1, Request for Executive Session C, Kitchen Can versus Minute Cheney. Um, do we have a motion? Your Honor. Go ahead, Bob. I'm with the City Council to declare that consistent with the City Attorney's request dated March 4th, 216, is in the best interest of the City Council to discuss the pending litigation in City versus Cheney ETAL and give direction to the city attorney in handling the matter in executive session in accordance with KMC 2.04.025A1 and 3, which includes the need to discuss subject and knowledge of which would have an immediate adverse impact upon the finances of the city and to receive legal advice within the attorney client privilege. We have a second? Second. second. Who did second? Call the roll. Uh, Coos. Yes. Gage. 
Yes. Harris? Yes, ma'am. Severson? Yes. D. Yes. All right. Let's adjourn from this meeting. Let's hop in the other one. Order. We've been Dave in uh, executive session. Dick, Dick, um, Dick. Is there a manager like this? <laughs> we gave direction to um, management. Um, there's no action at this time. Um, the last question does move to adjourn. Well, I got. I, oh, hold sorry. on. Hold I'd, on. I'd like to have an update from the manager's office in regards to where we are with the contracts. I haven't heard anything, and I know people have been asking me, so I, I didn't know if we were moving forward. With we have a negotiation. I think next week they can oh, do another set of negotiations. <laughs> when do we next <laughs> negotiate again? We have two days of mediation scheduled: the 29th and 30th of this month. Okay, okay that's all I wanted. Yep. I just want to know what our okay. dates were, where we're yep. going. And last but not least. Can anybody do the radio tomorrow? Somebody that hasn't done it in a while. <coughs> Dick, um, Judy. I Jelly. missed a meeting. I'm, I'm being forced, so I can't. <laughs> I can't do it in the morning. I can't do morning. Yeah. I'll let him know we don't have anybody available unless I can get away. I don't think I can. All right. Great to do. I'll, I'll go down. Okay. Thanks, Dick. <laughs> All right. Um, now, KJ. You've been sleeping in anyway. Thank you. Right. I love that. Where is it at?